Hey guys, Cruel Blind Wave, I'm Eric. Rick. I'm Calvin. Aaron. And we're back with Better Call Saul last time on. What happened? Death! Yes. Yes. Yes, Gus killed a man. He killed now a man. has Nacho in his pocket. Which that sounds messy. It's gonna break, yeah. It's gonna go everywhere. You can yeah. just shove nachos Sticky. into your pocket. I had nachos the other day. Sour cream and what lettuce. was that man's name? Pico de Gallo. I wrote Salamanca's guy. Cheese. Some adobo chicken. Today. I don't know his name. I don't know. Chicken adobo? Yeah. I want to call him Queso. Nacho. What? That might be offensive too. <laughs> He's horny. Oh. Again? Mm. That's a much better version. Is it? Well, it's, before it's, it was a hose. I feel like this one's noticeable, though. As long as it's effective, it doesn't matter what it looks like. That's not Mike. That is not Mike. I that is, think no, it's not Gus's you. man. That is Nick Cage from Ghost uh, Shoot. Can't Ghost. remember the name of the movie. Ghost Shoot. I want to watch it. <laughs> What's he doing? Testing. Is he going to drive over him? Is he testing Spike Strip? Isn't that not just yeah. man, or Gus's it's man? What a Gus's That's guy. Gus's guy. Not Victor, but. Oh. Oh. This is, sounds like a terrible test. Uh, tested it with a shittier car. Yeah, look at this. They can afford it. Car has a number. No. Oh no, it is Victor. But I, I thought it was the other guy. Where are the No! Guys? We killed the other guy. The black guy. Hey, so? No. That's not Gus's guy. That's Salamanca's guy. <clears throat> that guy. Uh, that guy was that guy. Huh. <laughs> they do have very similar haircuts. I get it. <laughs> I don't get it. And they're both wearing gloves. Wearing different jackets. And they don't always wear gloves. We always wear gloves, right? Yeah. That guy's so much taller. <laughs> they were sitting down. <laughs> If you're in the trunk, it'd kill you, I guess. Oh, damn! Make it look like a hit? Yeah. The cell motors are drive being by. attacked right now. Hey, they did that. That looks so good, but they're not shooting a live round at the bullet Yeah. Okay. And they just have it timed. It's, probably timed. it's timed so well. It's probably real bullets, Eric. You're not going to be looking for signs of suffocation. How do you think you died? Diabetes. <laughs> Jeez. What's he supposed to do? Miraculously survive. Can I make the call now? Oh! Are they killing Nacho? <sighs> Gotta make it look real. Damn, man. Do it quick before you pass out. You can so die. Good. Oh, yeah. Hey, Google. <laughs> Remember what we were saying? Gus, he's not that bad to work for. Until you cross him. <laughs> no one kills he's, Salamanca. Say, he's not doing this at Chicken Bros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get a legit job for him, and he's real good. Is that who they called? That's who Nacho called, probably. Are they gonna come and save his life? He's looking real dead. Yeah. I feel like the condition of him versus Nacho over there is the worst part of this plan. Sure. Die 
die just from laying there. Yeah. Not even the bullet holes. And he looks rough. Oh, man. He looks real Goodness. rough. Destroy the body and whatever evidence is there. It's probably a split second you can see it in the reflection of the car. That's awesome. The fire? Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, who's that? Uh oh. oh. They need him to help Nacho? I suppose. Can I help you? Yeah. Never a word. They can communicate telepathically. <laughs> Damn, Nacho. Who he dies? If he dies, he and dies. He every damn car, please. Are they driving? I think yeah. So. Yeah. Ooh, in the short. Big old needle. I appreciate there was no <laughs> noise when it went in or anything. Sometimes shit movies do that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what movie you're talking about. <sighs> Just cut it off. Cut what off? What? His arm? His shirt. shirt. Oh. <laughs> his stomach? <laughs> cut off his stomach. Is he handled? Like, is he able to handle this? I'm sure this guy gets a lot of these. Yeah, animals get shot. Well, I mean, a lot of criminals that don't want to go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, that's it. <laughs> one time someone shot one of our cows with a paintball. But that's been like 10 years looking for him. The cow? The person. <laughs> he was so mad. <laughs> oh, who gave the transfusion? One of the dudes? Yeah. He woke up. That means my Spanish is good enough, and your Brenner over here is actually O negative. <laughs> okay. I had to leave a bullet in your shoulder. Might set off metal detectors from now on. Now, sniff test says you probably didn't perforate your bowel. Probably. I can't be 100% sure you didn't get nicked. Now, if this starts to leak, you're going to get the worst infection of your life. It's going to hurt like hell, and then you're going to die. So I advise you. To go see a doctor that has some imaging tech. Keep these clean and dry. Change the bandages daily. You should be okay. Now understand this. After I walk out of here, I never want to see you again. Never. This cartel shit is too hot for me. You got it? Cartel really don't care what you want. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. Is he heel? He looks a little bigger. Yeah. Not heel big. Well, he lost some weight, though. He did. It's a, well, he hasn't gained it yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's heel. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? It's definitely heel. You're just judging this guy on his body size. Yeah. Oh, it's not heel. Oh, it's not heel. <laughs> nope, we fucked that up. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Just some guy. They did it on purpose. It what do you like, mean? <laughs> it looked like Jim Beaver almost. Oh, uh, you guys are literally judging this guy on the size of him. Yeah. That's how I you judge You do that people. to Eric There's all no the other time. big guys no, in the show. I know yeah. the size of Eric. I didn't judge some guy in the dark based on, that's probably Eric right there. Look at look his size. Not Jim Beaver. If you walked in wearing a hundred shirts and they only saw your silhouette, like, that's Eric. Yeah. People, were gonna, people would be justified. Wouldn't they? A <laughs> hundred shirts. A hundred so shirts. Big. Shit, is he going to grab the wrong one? Oh, okay. I don't know who that is. Jim Beaver is the one that gives him guns. Oh, right? yeah. It's just by the beard and not in the... Don't break it. Don't drop angle. it. Why'd you take your, your glove off? Well, theoretically, they're not going to be checking, right? Yeah. Oh shit, someone's shit in gold. <gasps> oh shit! Uh, they live here? Huh. Goodness. Oh fuck, he is. He's under the desk. How 
How's he gonna get out of this? Oh, oh my god. Shit. He sits down and kicks him. It's me. Can we talk, please? I, trouble. I just wanna come home. I mean, you're saying I'm a, I'm a thoughtless, that I don't care, but it is a very, very expensive vacuum. <laughs> it, it never loses suction. Oh, so what you're wow. saying is I've got, I gotta sleep in my office because I got you a gift? Lynette? She didn't like the vacuum as a gift? Lynette? Lynette. Just comes out of the desk, gives him advice, fixes things for him. Right. The copier salesman probably got sold a vacuum from a superior salesman. <laughs> got him. Who's he calling now? Listen. Listen. Look, the office guy, he's here. What? He's dug in for the night, man. Come get me. Or, or come get me. Yeah. There you go. He set off his car alarm. Not give him enough time to get out. Oh, damn it! Far enough. Hey, if he can get out into the main room and hide in there, that's, yeah, that's yeah, not bad. but he's still gonna lock. No, him. get out in the main room you and hide in there. Fucking idiot! Maybe there's nowhere. He might have went back into a different room. No, oh, he, he didn't. went back in the same day. I would have hid back over here, you know. Sure. Yeah. Somewhere. Any, anywhere else, except for in the same room he's been stuck in that you know he's gonna go back to to eat his pizza. This is why this guy. I'm only gonna give him two thousand. You have to jimmy a door. <laughs> Put a ninja <laughs> on. Well, that'll do it. Oh, go 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 go. Lock him out. No. no. No, he's just getting his thing. Okay. The alarm the, bridger. Yeah. Yesterday, on the way back from their pickup. Do we know who? Not yet. Vargas survived barely. But he couldn't see faces. Someone knows our business. Possibly. It resembled the attack on Hector struck a few months ago, and they knew the Salamanca men were heavy. How long before our dealers run dry? No more than a week. This is a problem. Find a local supplier on your side of the border. Mm. Cut a deal. Um, I know this song. What is this song from? Animaniacs. Is that what it is? Thinking of Mass Effect. They range from 39% to 58% pure, except this one, which hovers around 67. Top of the class, so to speak. Is it Walt's like You should tell the chemist to check his yeah. cookware. It's introducing contamination, which would be easy to avoid. These samples aren't great. In fact, they're, um... Of this They're... They're not even good. Basically, they're dreck. I could do much better. But I'm afraid I can't allow it. Not yet. You were meant for better things. I'll see you soon, Cam. Hmm. Bye, Mr. Frank. He already started making a under laundry mm -hmm. lab, yeah. right? Yeah. He at least was looking into it. The letter? Yeah. Yeah. And the $5,000 check. Looks like it was open. Uh, it might be the the $5,000 check is open. The letter is uh, not. 2% milk. He's right. What the yeah. fuck does it's that have to do? Blue cat. What are you. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you a minute alone. No, no. Is it be good or bad? I don't know. In, uh. You want to hear this, right? Yeah, if it's okay. <sighs> we have not always seen eye to eye. I expect that will continue to be so in the future. However, nothing will ever change the fact that we are brothers, flesh and blood. 
Mm. And though we are very different people, I want you to know how much I respect what you have made of yourself in these last few years. I sincerely admire your energy and resilience. I used to worry about you finding a place in the world, but I'm not worried about that anymore. I'm certain now that no matter what the future may bring, you'll land on your feet, and I hope when you read this, you remember me not only as your brother, but as a person you knew was always in your corner. He signed it just Chuck. So that's before he became a lawyer. Kim. See if we get that thieves name, or should we wait until we get it? Oh, if we, we might not ever show it. I don't know. Each year, never read Gil's last name or remember. Uh, no, we just got Gil's name. Huh? Gil Bedeker. Bedeker. Yeah, that's right. I just don't remember. <laughs> yeah, they had said in the last one. The, that. Uh, bring that. The next one. <laughs> <sighs> hmm. Do you think it's kind of like hitting her the idea that like, like are these ideas Chuck had before and then after like all this stuff happened and you know they just destroyed, like she feels like they destroyed a man right kind of thing right? Like you think that's kind of what's hitting her? It's like maybe he did think this but now he doesn't think that after afterwards and then this happened. And, is it like I mean, that? It sounded like he wrote that letter before Jimmy tried to become a lawyer and pass the bar. And like, That's what I thought. That had nothing to it do was with whenever him. he was still a valued member of. He was HHM. still at HHM. It was yeah. before he left that, at least. So it's, it's been years, I think. Um, yeah, with it being undated, it's hard to really tell. But I'm sure she feels very guilty about what happened to him, and like sure. she said about you know punching down to a sick man and stuff like that. So I'm sure that's upsetting her. Sure. Yeah, and I think. Jimmy's lack of being upset yeah. is also probably very upsetting for her. It's my favorite yeah. part of the scene is that she's but, so emotional and he's so neutral. So yeah. He's like reading good. it through a mouthful of food. Yeah. Sure, and, and you're looking at this letter where it's like, well, when did he write this? You know, how long ago? Versus the last thing he said to me was that I never mattered to him, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. It would be, it'd be weird and hard, I think, reading a letter and being like, well, this is what he said to me, but is this different? But then you can be like, I mean, he wrote a good letter, but does this really mean anything? You know, like that's kind of what he was saying. Sure. Like, you can write a letter, but which, well, which one's the real Chuck? Yeah, I mean, at least like he wrote the letter and it wasn't to be read at the will reading or whatever. Like it was just for Jimmy. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he was putting on a show for anyone, if that makes sense. I suppose. I mean, I, I believe could... that at the time he wrote it, he believed what he was writing. But I think. That is not how he felt at the time of his death. I mean, maybe. I mean, you, he could have also maybe. just been... The show that's being put on could be for Jimmy. So the letter in itself could be a show could for be. Jimmy to be like, look, true. Da, da, da. But it's I mean, also years ago when things weren't as bad and he's in a mindset of, like, I'm leaving my final word for this person. You know, you might sugarcoat your true feelings just because you want to be remembered as like I was a good brother sure I did my part you yeah. know and it's, sure. it's a show in a way but it's almost a show to yourself like he well. didn't say like I'll always love you or any yeah. of that kind of stuff he yeah. said we'll always be brothers flesh and blood yeah kind of like that kind of in a way implies like we will be brothers because we are brothers yeah, yeah. not because I care about you you know what I mean so like, like yeah. there's Some a connection can... that we can't break no matter what we're always yeah. gonna be connected no matter how hard Chuck tries yeah <laughs> <laughs> True. I wonder or how much Jimmy doesn't care. Sure. He, yeah. Like you know, Kim. I'm, I'm I'm sitting there listening to it and I'm, I'm choking up. But and Kim is too. Like it's just a, it's a you know, if it's fake or not, it still feels heartfelt. But part of what might make her upset is that Jimmy does not care. I wonder if when Chuck wrote that letter, if Jimmy was given more money in the will, and if Chuck has since changed that. But still kept the letter in, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Sure. Like, at this time, say he added that letter and said $5,000, and that's all he gets. Yeah. You know? Or if he wrote the letter, it was a million dollars or something, and he 
was like, well, I don't feel this way about Jimmy anymore. I give him 5000 but I still give him the letter. I don't know. I wonder. I mean, but, leaving, we'll never know. leaving that letter there while still... If, if he did reduce it, why leave that letter there like that? I just feel like it's conflicting messages with mm-hmm. the letter and the 5000 mm-hmm. whereas I feel like maybe at one point it wasn't 5000 Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, maybe, but we have no information on that either. Mm-hmm. Like, it might ne- never have been. Yeah. Like, a lot of the stuff we had with Chuck, like, the thing where, like, he kind of blamed Jimmy for the dad, right? For losing the shop. Yeah, for the way the shop and everything went through. Mm-hmm. He kind of held the... The mom woke up, and the only thing she said about was Jimmy, and then died, and I felt like he kind of held that against him a little bit, even though he never told him about it. There's a lot of things where it seems like he was always had it out for Jimmy, but... I, got, I, I really I don't know. I phone call. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Open up Cap Tono's notes to see if he had any notes for this episode, and then Tim Williams was calling. Oh. That's the judge, right? Yeah. Bad news? Just, no, he just sent some different versions of vows <laughs> that he has. I just had requests, and, like, you know, we were just wanting something secular, so he was looking through some of the stuff. So he sent an email, and then I got to get back to him. Just make him up. Do that, too. <laughs> True. Okay. Sorry about that. She can just Hurst can just say I love you, and you can just say I know, I know. and you guys just kiss <laughs> each other, and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, you were the Leia to my Han, you were the R two to my three PO, the Tally to my Shepard, the Star Wars to my Eric. <laughs> Why are you throwing Mass Effect in there? Because I love Mass Effect so much. It feels like you just ruined the whole Star Wars I didn't ruin it. It's just that's how much I love it and how much I've, it's part of me now. That's one of mine. I can't believe he hasn't played that. Ruined. Yeah. I haven't played Mass Effect. Uh, you haven't played Mass Effect, right? Bookmarks. Captona. I tried. I tried my hardest. Oh, yeah? Didn't like it? No. Zach's Xbox died on me. Oh. Is that the game that it died on you on? Yeah. See, that, you, your experience with Mass Effect is similar that in a way to my experience with yeah. KOTOR. Where, like, I borrowed Tyson Kemp, I, t- I borrowed his Xbox, and then he wanted it back, so I never got to finish it. Then I borrowed another guy's Xbox when I was traveling, and then that got stolen. I remember that. I didn't that. finish it then, <laughs> and I think I attempted it on a 360 at some point in the future when I owned a 360, and I think it red ringed. <laughs> like, there was, everything was against me. I was never allowed to play Kotor. I don't know why. I never beat it. I played the beginning five times, <laughs> you know? Ugh. <sighs> uh. But yeah, just some of the stuff with Chuck, it's just a tricky thing. So I'm like, it's hard to know exactly how he felt. And to know, like, there's this letter but not being dated. Yeah. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's it's a weird thing. So like, I complex. get Jimmy. I also can kind of get Kim a little bit, but I was trying to think, about, like, what is she thinking and what's going through her mind? Because a lot of this episode, I was thinking about, like, what's going through Kim's mind with a lot of this stuff. Like, with the, the expansion of her, stuff, the expansion. Is she thinking about it? It's going to be too big of a job. I mean, like, that just, like, it's going to be more work, but it's also going to be way more money, in which case you can yeah. hire more paralegals. Yeah. But, like, I think that she's just afraid of being, like, just sucked in and taken over, right? Maybe. I mean, that's why she just recently took this kind of sabbatical, not sabbatical, being able to rest. Yeah. Um, yeah. It shouldn't be injury. called sabbatical no. when she's recovering from an injury. True, <laughs> but, like, she, she purposely did it. And yeah. she turned down the one guy's yeah. job, but not Mesa Verde, I think, mm-hmm. right? It's good that she's given her paralegal work, and yeah, I think she just maybe needs to start her own firm. Yeah, at a certain point, like mm-hmm. which has, I mean, that was the plan, right? Like they were going to have their own practices, separate practices, but in the same building, right? Was the idea? Well, yeah, but there's a difference between like a being a practice, a, and a practicing firm. lawyer, or being in a firm with more lawyers and more people to work with and whatnot. Yeah, but she could start like her own HHM kind of thing and get a few people under. her. Yeah, she can't have Jimmy right now, but she could have Jimmy in like a year. Yeah. Maybe. If she, wants, I kind if she wants him. Don't want her to do that. <laughs> I mean, that's what, like, Howard yeah. and Chuck were, like, warning her against, right? Yeah. Chuck especially, I guess. Yeah. But she'd get Ernesto. Ernesto would be the shit. He's not cut through enough to be a good lawyer. He wasn't a lawyer either, right? He was just kind of like an He's assistant. Par- paralegal. Yeah. Like, they're all paralegals. His, and then his Ernesto end was goal, I think, was lawyer, but... I thought he was a paralegal. No, he was just... He was just helping transport documents and stuff like that yeah. from HHM back and forth. We never like saw he was good him. friends with Jimmy because he sure. was in the mailroom. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We never saw him in like the what do they call that? The cornfield? Yeah. Where, Kim was Where they're doing too. the archiving. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know, but I thought it was generally like you hire paralegals until one of them makes partner, and then you can have the, the partnership thing. I don't know how it works, though. I mean, all that Breaking Bad wiki says is that Ernesto is a former employee at Hamlin Hamlin McGill. Doesn't even say what his job was. So we can just say with confidence what we believe, and there's no way to prove us wrong. Well, I mean, we know for sure that he did work in the mailroom. Mm-hmm. Ernesto is put in charge of bringing supplies to Chuck, mm-hmm. so he was a supplier. Yeah. A different kind of supplier than what Gus is looking for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, Gail is so ready and willing he is. To, to do anything that he can for Gustav. But Gus... Even though he's told that's what he needs to get, <laughs> it's like he's no. Yeah, I, at first I didn't know time. if he was going the angle like, well, I want this to feel like it's your idea. That way, you're trying to please me, and I'm yeah, not no. asking you for a favor. He has, but it also else feels entirely. like he's got something else going on. Well, I mean, he he knows that he's going to build the lab beneath yeah. the laundry. Like he wants to weaken. He's saving Gale for that. Well, yeah, we know he's going to build the lab beneath the laundry. It's the same reason he doesn't want. But he's still like he hasn't bought the place yet, did he? He was, like, work, looking at it with Lydia? Yeah, I don't know if he signed the papers. We haven't seen anything whatever. else well, yet. yet. I thought he said, like, yes, this will do nicely or something like that. Like, I thought it was an affirmative. Yeah. I mean, it's the same reason he doesn't want Nacho to go after Hector right now. It's not time. He's going to eventually poison and kill the cartel, but not. he doesn't want to undermine them yet. Yeah. He's working towards, like, because right now he's being given the opportunity to bring... Local drugs in, yeah, which then gives time. him more freedom. And if they, if he does well and gives more money, then he's going to get more and more freedoms. Yeah. And then once he starts running things on his own, he doesn't need the cartel anymore because he can do everything locally. That's, I mean, that's why Don Eladio, right, yeah. doesn't want to have local suppliers because they need to be reliant on him. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Because once you're not relying on him, what's the reason? Then to have you're him? a free enterprise. Yeah. 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 And it worked out perfect for Gus. He got to kill this guy. And also make it so that he can be more independent. Sure. I mean, killing that guy wasn't necessarily something that benefits him, but making a hit on the Salamancas, I think it just pushes the, the narrative that he wants and stuff. I don't know if that guy specifically was like, we need to get rid of this guy, but he was a problem compared to Nacho, who he doesn't own. Poor you Nacho. Know? Like, yeah. Gus is like, I own you. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Nacho was looking rough. Real rough. You know yeah. what? Is whoever it was, it was like that guy in that car looks so much more like so much worse than Nacho. But then we saw Nacho. And Nacho, Nacho looked pretty rough too. <laughs> yeah, he did. Even though yeah. he wasn't dead, you know, like but he looked rough. And he's gonna have a bullet in his shoulder his whole life now. Sure. Which might not be too long. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I kept wondering, especially during the Chuck stuff uh, and Jimmy not dealing with it slash not caring the focus of the fish like the fish kept we kept seeing it on the counter and we kept having close-ups of it and it's only in this episode where i think it's just meant to be like he literally has his tie to that vet on the table his scams his jobs like it's still there like it's in the background it's in the foreground but i, I wonder if that's meant to be visual uh you think the fish is in on it yeah <laughs> but i just wonder if like because i was I was trying to think of, like, what theme that could fit, but it could kind of fit, like, he won't ever... Like, as long as that's on the table, he doesn't let, go, let that go. I don't know. Maybe. Well, goldfish don't live very long, so... True. That's a good reason to bring a fish, because they don't have very good memories either. Well, speaking of not very good memories, I do have some Cat Tono notes. And this one, yeah, I would never have made this connection. It makes a lot of sense. Um, Ira... The professional burglar that Jimmy hires owns the pest control company, Vomino's Pests, in Breaking Bad. Walter, Jesse, and Mike use it as a front in their meth production operation in okay. Breaking Bad Season 5. Yep, that's totally him. And it's yeah. not Huel. <laughs> no. So, yeah, uh, if we, I, I would never remember that, but as soon as, that, as soon as I read it here, I'm like, oh yeah, it totally is that guy. That guy's voice. Yeah, and that's where um, the one kid works for him, right? Ooh. And then they get Jesse Clemens. Not Matt Damon. Yeah, not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Man. 
uh, why am I blanking on his name too? But that will get them hooked up with the, the you talking about the, Jesse Plemons about the, is, is the actor's name, right? Yeah, yeah. What's I the know. name of the character? That's why I, I can't remember right now. Oh, um, Chad. No. no, it's right on the tip right here, but I can't catch it. Todd. 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 You're right, but Todd. That, that way they will. I don't know what you're thinking of. Nice. That way they <laughs> they will tie up with the white nationalists for the finale of Breaking Bad. So cool. Having yeah, that character. I, Ira makes a better pest control dude than a thief. Yeah, he does. He really, he really fucked that up. <laughs> he like he didn't. It was not his fault. <laughs> as as a as a cat burgling thief, <laughs> yeah. he knows all the places that bugs can hide. <laughs> I, mean, I do. You, I think he's better than anyone here. You'd get lost in that place. I couldn't crack that door. I can say for ah. certain that I would have left that room. But you and a guy in there, you can't crack that lock. I think I would have smelled him I, in the bathroom. I can easily pick that lock. We're going to go get a lock. I have gotten you Rick into his house minutes. when no, he's been locked out before. There's no way I could have done it. What? Nothing. Anything. Yeah. Nope. No way. They don't have the skills. Yeah. I'm yeah saying, and that's what I want people to do. You're saying this guy, like, ah, he fucking sucks. <laughs> sure. He's don't do right? Just well, don't better. do shit that you're not supposed to. <laughs> I, I am a, I am a, a white hat lock picker. <laughs> yeah. As far as anyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't show it, because then he would have spread those bad skills to others. What bad skills? Well, picking locks, that's not good. Why not? It's fine. There's, there are professions for picking locks. Yeah, yeah. You could do they're a called lot of, locksmiths. Sure. You could do a mean? lot of bad things shooting guns, but that doesn't mean being good at shooting a gun is necessarily bad. True. Yeah, lock picking is a good. That's a that's a profession right there. You could be a, a getaway driver, but you can also just be a good driver. Yeah. Yeah. You could be a collector. Doesn't mean that you're collecting used human bones. See, I, I get what you're saying, but it's weird when you say it. All human bones are used. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get a new human What's bone? What's a new human See, bone? That's, that's weird, weird, right? It depends <laughs> what it's used for. No one would ever do that. Uh, he had some other notes here. The music played during the scene in which the twins find Arturo. That is his name. I'm not Queso Rick. <laughs> in the desert. Comes from the first soundtrack of Breaking Bad and has been heard several in several episodes uh, in season three of Breaking Bad. So, return of some music. That's cool. Um, Gail, of course, makes the appearance. And then, uh, Mr. Neff orders a pizza and specifically wants it pre sliced. Yeah. We still in the box that the pizza comes from Venencia's Pizzeria. In Breaking Bad, that's the pizza place that doesn't slice their pizza and passes the savings onto the customer, according to Badger. And also, it's the pizza that Walt throws on the roof of his that's house. That's right, because it, it yeah. wasn't sliced. It, it landed wasn't as sliced. a whole pie. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Okay. Well, yeah. I love those little tiny details, and I, yeah, I'm not good enough with Breaking Bad to remember the, yeah. the Venezio's pizza. They need to say that so it makes sense that it stays together. Yeah, exactly. It's on the roof. Like, what? <laughs> Man, that's the worst when you get a pizza that's not properly cut. <sighs> Fucking hate it. I would go to cut it and just goes halfway into the next. I will piece. say I would rather them not cut it yeah. than to cut it poorly. Then like this one. I have like a pizza cutter wide, and no. this one's like yeah. a like, quarter of the pizza. <laughs> like what house doesn't have a pizza cutter? I have a pizza cutter. Yeah. I can cut my own pizza, but I, what I can't do is fix it when sure. they fuck it up. I hate I hate the the half's weird. Like they're cut. Yeah. There's like little. This half is little. You sure. And this half is huge. Like yeah. what are you doing? It's weird because it's. <laughs> well, just now. Um, it's weird because, like, whenever I would cut pizza, even if I had a dull cutter, like, I feel like it's very easy to get good, clean cuts. Sure. Even so it's either like dull. it's either just like poorly baked, maybe, or it's just I don't know. Yeah. A teenager at the you're job. Talking, you're talking about the shit. ones where it's like, oh, here's like a perforated spot. Yeah. But you gotta like rip it to get yeah. that yeah. cheese. Yeah. And it, like, it takes like half of the cheese and the next slice over. Yeah. And you're trying to do surgery and put well, back together. Well, that's just because the, the cheese is too cold already, yeah. and, it's, and it's, like, welded itself back The ones together. I don't understand is when, like, the center oh, yeah. has they, it like, been cut. Like, this segment in the middle. Like, the, the center's over here <laughs> in a pizza. It's well, like no, when you're dicing no. an onion and you don't it's, go all the way to the end. It's, like, <laughs> the middle part. I've had pizzas before where it's, like, I pick it up, and then down here at, towards the corner, I got to, like, rip it. Because somehow they, like, didn't go all the way. I don't know what they did. I don't know how they did it. It's ridiculous. Pizza cutter's good. I prefer scissors. That's wrong. 
objectively and subjectively. Here. Both. It's, it's one of the more satisfying. No, it, no. It, it takes, just Rick is trying to get times longer. Well, Rick is piece. trying to get one, another two, three, chaos four, compilation done. from Cobb is what he's doing. Chaos. <laughs> just no, Rick no, being it's chaotic. Who <laughs> gets scissors? Let's imagine this man. Cut what are you pizza. fuck? Are, wait, so you have a non-cut pizza? Yeah. Not cut at all. Yep. You pick up half of it and just start cutting through. Yeah. It's with great. like garden shears? Is no, it? with kitchen scissors. You you have to angle. They're called kitchen shears. You have to angle the pizza, right? What are your toppings and cheese not just? Well, you have to pick up one side. Is it not at least. burning your hand. But no. then the one pizza is rubbing against your hand, I, and you have half a piece of pizza just in the scissors and on your hand. I put it on a cooling rack, which has you know. Not in the cool. middle. So There's a crossbar. <laughs> I you at least get like the big like Klingon like blade thing. Oh, 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 oh. You see those things? Yeah. That's, that's super fast. I don't, need, I don't need speed. It's one pizza. But the cheese made. will get on your hand and sauce is hot. Yeah, I think you're doing this wrong, Rick. That was so Rick. hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're done. Thank you guys for watching our reaction to Better Call Saul. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch it as it comes next week. Or if you just can't wait, you can see four more reactions right now over at patreon.com slash blindwave. Not just for this show, but for all of the catch-up shows. Let us know if you use scissors on your pizza. That's great. Try it. We want engagement. We're not getting nothing with that. Yeah. Let us know if you, with the right ways.